exactly how your experience was in, Ecle in East Cleveland, your past, your present, and your future vision. Vision of East Cleveland would be great. Starting with you, Madam and Mrs. Teachout, tell us about yourself and the history of your family. Well, I, like I said, I was, I was born in Greenpoint Hospital, and that was in New York. And for me, I've traveled all over the United States. And so when in, in coming to Cleveland, we first landed in Willoughby, Ohio. And from Willoughby, we came into East Cleveland. And East Cleveland reminds me a lot of uh, Brooklyn. Okay. In which way, East Cleveland remind you? The, um, the neighborhoods, the, okay. the, the friendliness of the people, the home togetherness. When I first, uh, we first moved into Lake Park Towers, and Michael introduced me to a, a lot of the residents because he had met them first. And, you know, they took me, Miss uh, Sheets is one of the ladies, and she took me underneath her wings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she took me to all the different gatherings when I first came here. So, you know, I had a, I got to meet a lot of different people. And, and I had a lot of fun. There's a lot of social stuff here in East Cleveland, and that's what I was used to in New York, is going to plays and, you know, everything that you can imagine is here in East, and in Cleveland and East Cleveland. And I got the opportunity to go to a lot of things. So it was fun for me, you know, since I've been here. And what year was that that you arrived in East Cleveland? What was it? 2008. 2008. So you felt that the people here was warm and welcoming to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was across the board, not just in one particular area? No, it was across the board. Okay. And Mr. Michael, tell me a little bit about, the, about yourself and your history and your family history here in East Cleveland. Uh, <clears throat> my parents are both born in Ohio. I was born, like I said, in Warren. Uh, son of a steel worker, third generation. Uh, my mother worked at the same bank, Union Savings and Trust, downtown Warren for 30 years. Uh, they had two kids, myself and a younger sister, who was a, she's, an, she's a lawyer. Um, I am a retired plumber. Uh, left out of Warren in 1979. 78 and uh, moved out west. Uh, now I'm a retired plumber slash uh, building renovator now uh, here in here in the city of East Cleveland actually. Uh, took a job with Lake Park Tower as a maintenance man a couple of years back. Spent a year doing that. Got my foot in the door. Met people. Uh, my wife and I decided we liked it here. Everybody treated us very nice, kind, and, uh, you know, just like we'd been with, born and raised here. And uh, I took a job with a company based out of Canada. And like I say, we're uh, renovating buildings, <clears throat> so there's uh, affordable, clean, and uh, nice housing for the people here the residents in East Cleveland, because it's a wonderful city. It's just been neglected for so many years. So you both came here together. Yes. What What brought you to East Cleveland? Was what you told about East Cleveland, or did it just happen to land in East Cleveland? We just happened to land here. I okay. took the job at Lake Park Tower on Superior, and uh, uh, my wife, of course, came with me. She goes everywhere with me. and. Uh, we just uh, fell in love with it okay. okay. since we've been here. Okay. And that was in 2008, correct? Uh, well, I would say more like 2009. 2009. We came, to, we came back to Ohio from Nevada in 2008. Okay. Okay. And is any other, your families, either you, Dietra, or Michael, any of your other family members been a part of East Cleveland at all? 
or have you heard about it at any point of your lives? I, Good, bad, or indifferent? Growing up, my teen years, excuse me, dear, but my teen, year, or teen years, uh, from the time I could walk, we, my parents would bring us kids up to Geneva on the lake and uh, for vacation every year. And uh, my mother would bring us kids down here to East Cleveland. Now, that was back in the 60s. It was a clean, wonderful place, lots of shops. Everybody knew everybody by name. Uh, you could go in any any number of shops down on Euclid, and the my mother would go in there and shop, and uh, they would give us kids candy, and mom would have a cup of coffee with the owner of the business, and uh, it was just it was really a cool place back in those days, until about 68, 69 is when it really started uh, going downhill. And how old were you guesstimate around that time of? Uh, oh, I was between the ages of five and ten. Five and ten years yeah. old. Okay. Oh yeah. So you remember those uh, years oh, and that yeah. visiting? It was, it was great here. Everybody, the older folks would be on Sundays would walk together. The older couples down going to church and dressed to the nines and and it, it was wonderful, you know. And everybody is how do you do? How are you? And if they couldn't sell you something, they fed you something. Okay. Okay, okay. You remember those days. Oh, yes, I do. Okay, okay. It was yesterday. Okay. Any additional uh, uh, piggyback, uh, Dietra, you want to say? Have you ever heard of East Cleveland prior to coming at any point of your life? The only thing that I had heard about East Cleveland is, is around the time of the riots and, you know, I really didn't understand it at that time because I was young. But I heard about, you know, East Cleveland from that. But other than that, I had, had never heard of it. No prior to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I wanted to ask the next question is, can you, t can you think back of your earliest memories of East Cleveland and tell me what life was like then? Like I said earlier, it was beautiful here. The, the streets were clean, there wasn't any litter, there was no graffiti. Uh, everybody kept their lawns up, uh, kept their homes up. There was lots of work, the steel mills were all going, and, and uh, people were generally happy, and you couldn't walk down a street in East Cleveland without the people waving, saying good morning, good, good afternoon, or how are you? This was a wonderful place in those days. And uh, I'm talking from memory, the 60s and the early 70s. But there was, it was going down, it was, I don't know, it seemed like it was going downhill. I think, uh, you know, uh, businesses started to leave. Um, the older generation started dying off. And uh, the people I remember. When you say going downhill, did you see this? Or did you feel this? A little bit of both. Okay, okay. A little bit of both. Because at that time, in the late 60s, early, well, 70s, when I, I was still coming up here all through the 70s for, uh, <clears throat> ought to go downtown Cleveland uh, for, you know, rock concerts at the Agora Ballroom. And uh, I had some friends that lived up here and uh, Coventry, that area. But we came through East Cleveland to go to Cleveland, and uh, you could just see it declining throughout the 70s. You could, mm -hmm. you know, it was nothing overnight. It was a gradual decline, and uh, I, you know, racism was at a peak. Uh, it really was, whether you want to believe it or not. Man. Okay, when you uh, mentioned back in the 70s, you can see it, you can see and feel. It was a change coming on, but you didn't know that change was going to be what? Well, it just every weekend that we would come down, come uh, up here to East Cleveland or to Cleveland, you could see East Cleveland, uh, the businesses. Bus every time a business front would be boarded up okay. or out of business or whatnot, and I mean it was it wasn't like it was uh, an overnight thing. It wasn't like somebody hit a light switch, it just slowly declined.
people moved out to the suburbs. Okay. Uh, a lot of it had to do with the lack of work. You know, uh, the mills were cutting back and cut. You know, and come on, we live in the steel steel to, uh, steel valley. And when the steel mill shut down, there was unemployment. High unemployment brings what? People just don't care anymore. They're looking for either a way out or they just don't care. Okay, okay. And you knew that at that, at, at that point? Well, I saw it because my, my father went through it. He spent 38 years at Republic Steel in Warren. And uh, every year he was laid off for a minimum of two, three months. Okay. And everybody struggled. I mean, it, it was just bad. Okay. And, uh, Dietra, what were your fondest memories in East Cleveland from when you first came to now? What would you think would be a high point for East Cleveland? My fondest memories of East Cleveland is... is uh, the political scene, you know, going around to the council meetings and getting involved, you know, meeting the mayor for the first time and um, city council and and I've I have a pol political background and so it was nice coming here and going to different social events where there was a lot of politicians and I got to meet the senators and. Um, being involved with NOAA and, and getting to go to the state capitol and all of that, those were my high points here in East Cleveland. So you were politically already inclined, so that wasn't a new point for you to, you were just reconnecting with the East Cleveland political right. people. Right. And you found that Fonda's memory is close to what you accustomed to seeing? Not really okay. accustomed to seeing because, you know, it, it's a different government here. And my portion of it was learning the difference here. And um, one of the things that I saw is that the government needed to change in a lot of ways. Okay. And just being a part of that process, seeing young, young people going into office, you know, um, I, I helped out with, with uh, Judge Will Dawson's campaign, and that was exciting for me, you know, to help him and see him actually win his election. Um, but recently, you know, seeing Mel Manziel Baker get into, you know, city council um, after the passing of Mildred Brewer. And she was somebody that was very special, and she, you know, she tried to mentor me, you know, in the process. So, you know, just just meeting with her, and she gave me such a great time, and, and we had laughs. We went to Columbus. She got, you know, she got to um, go to one of the presidential um, workshops and stuff, and she enjoyed herself doing that, and, you know, just getting her involved at her age, volunteering, and, you know, she was, she was such a hoot, you know, and she kept us laughing, you know, all the way down in the car, and, you know, just giving her wisdom, you know, and, and that's what I loved about here in East Cleveland, because the old timers, they'll sit down with you, and they'll talk with you, and give them their wisdom, what they went through, so that you don't necessarily have to go that path because they did it for you. Seems like you you passionate about that. Yes, you're definitely I love, passionate about I love that. that yes. And and Michael, you your fondest memories. I know you had mentioned in East Cleveland previously concerning the steel mills and your mm -hmm. father experience and what you mm -hmm. felt. What would be a a peak? Uh, one thing that you would say would be a fondest memory. Well, now that we live here, yes. It, you know, you could walk down to the end of our block. This is not, uh, we're not uh, urban here. We've got a, uh, we've got a park with a beautiful stream running through it right down at the end of our block. I take my grandsons every weekend when I can, and we walk down there. I take them around the, through Forest Hills Park. I take them to the, uh, to the swing sets, and we have a wonderful time. Nobody bothered. Everybody has a bad misconception about East Cleveland. 
It, you know, it's, we've had a couple of bad years early on in, in this city. So everybody named it, you know, gave it a, gave it a name. It's a bad place to live. Well, uh, good. Then don't come here. We don't need you. <laughs> um, it's a wonderful place to live, and I'm, I'm probably going to stay here the rest of my life. I, no, there's not even any probably to it. I, I, I love it here. Okay, great. This is a two-part question, uh, Dietra. This is so, uh, to start off. In what ways has the city changed over time? Since we've been here, um, I've seen changes in, in um, the area. Uh, when I first came, everybody talked about the crime and how... It was a high crime area and a lot of things happened. And in the beginning, we used to hear a lot of shootings. In the summertime, we, it was constantly at night hearing guns go off. Since we've been here and we moved over to Eddington, I haven't heard any gunshots at all. You know, So I know the police force has changed a lot since we've been here. And the crime rate has gone down that I can see. Yeah, it has. You know, I mean, I can walk at night and not f feel afraid. Now, I'm not testing the waters or anything. This thing, you know, I would come home from work or come home from a council meeting. And because I didn't have a car, I've walked all over East Cleveland. And no one's bothered me. No one's, a, you know, asked me for anything. You know, they just say hi. I say hi back. And, and I haven't had any problems, you know, getting off the bus or otherwise. Okay. And for you, Michael, you have mentioned several times with you being here the longest, correct? So mm -hmm. in, in your history, um, you've noticed change. It's the, for the better here. For the better, okay. Yeah, okay. I, the, cri the, the crime rate has gone way down. And the crime that we do have here in East Cleveland is young kids with too much time on their hands and okay. no guidance okay. and they don't have their their family nucleus is all goofed up because of this whatever I, I it just it makes me if they could have some kind of an outlet or some guidance say that, that would show these kids that they you know go out get an education get a job and if you can't handle that go in the military but they have nothing to do all day except sit around and what's every kid want? Money, cars, and girlfriends. Okay. Okay? And without the money or the car, guess what doesn't come? The girlfriends. So they go out, and that's how they supplement. Because they don't have anybody to tell them, hey, this is what you have to do, man. Too much time on their hands. Okay. That's all. So you think time has a lot to do right. with it on we their need, hands. We need our community to, to step up and say, hey, Get, you know, get these kids organized, you know, during the summer when they're out of school or when they graduate from school. Give them something to shoot for, not just, here's your, gra here's your diploma, go make it on your own. You know, come on, walk a mile in their shoes, I remember. I knew everything. Okay. Well, the word church is doing that. Well, know, that's it. They're starting to step up and right. have activities for youth and get them involved in different things. So, so, you know, there are different organizations starting to step up and say, hey, we have to save our children. And what church you've been to? The Word Church. And you feel that they're doing? They're doing, um, they're pulling the youth from East Cleveland and getting them active. They have a bus that comes pick them up okay. and brings them out to Warrensville for service. And then after service, they go to, um, they have a basketball court where they can play basketball. They feed them dinner, and then they bring them back to East Cleveland. What age group is that? What does this for the church? What um, age group? I think it consider? starts at 11 to 18, 19. Is this just during the summer or this all no, year round? He's, he's been doing it all year round. Have you noticed a difference? Yes, and we have a lot of teens from East Cleveland that are actively employed. So, um, a question to you both. So what do you think contribute to those changes? You mentioned the churches involved. Deitra, Michael, you mentioned that they need 
some guidance and guidance and certain other things to trigger them on the right track. And if not on the right track, they should be able to do a trade or go to the service. Is that correct? Just, an, just a person, you know, uh, an adult, okay. to just sit down with them and talk to them. Don't talk at them. Talk to them and, and let them know, hey, you know, these are the mistakes I made. Now, you can go ahead and do it if you want, but I'm just giving you forewarning. You know, this is what this is the end result if you stay on the path you're on. You know, okay. uh, get a trade, anything. 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 To ju just keep busy, you know, keep your hands busy. Do something. Do something. Positive, not, you, you know, that's just to say do something is not, it's got to be something positive. Positive. This is a two-part question. Uh, Dietra, this is for you to start off, please. How has race or racism impacted you personally? Here in East Cleveland, I, ha I have to say I haven't felt any racism as far as, you know, me and Michael being together. Everybody's been nice to us and we haven't had a problem, you know. Being in Nevada, we, we have problems, we have problems. <laughs> you know, and here, you know, everybody's been accepting, nobody said nothing, you know, like, why are you with him, or, you know, so for me, being here, I'm very comfortable, and I can be myself, and Michael <laughs> can be his self. Okay. When you say that people, meaning that you didn't get any negative looks or negative... No feeling because y'all a mixed couple um, you never felt that way correct okay and what about your in uh, uh, Michael how has race and racism impacted you personally uh, you know when we first moved here I was a little gun shy you know I uh, being uh, practically the only white guy around for a couple blocks anyway you know, I, I felt kind of uh, nervous at times. But you know what? Uh, to this day, night or day, I can walk up to Coventry, I can walk down to Euclid, and everybody in the neighborhood talks to me, talks to us. <clears throat> we have friends from one end of the block to the other. The kids come over and have me uh, pump air into their tires on their bikes, and uh, they everybody says hi and good morning to us. Uh, it's... I think racism is finally, uh, for the most part, you know, is dead. I mean, I, I, I guess I don't look for it, so I don't see it. Okay. Okay. And, and, and on your block now, is it a, a mixed um, mm -hmm. community? Right. So it is mixed mm -hmm. at, at a, this point? Yeah, we have a couple of uh, Caucasian couples here. Okay, uh -huh. and everybody seems to get along. Yeah. Okay. No prop kids. Play seem to get along. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. This place is uh, it's like Disneyland in the summer. Okay. There's so many kids running around. Okay. Okay, that's great. And this is a, the second part to the question: How has it impacted the city of East Cleveland? Race and racism impacted the city of East Cleveland. Uh, okay. Michael. Oh, man. Uh, well, uh, you know what? Like Mr. Taylor was saying, back in the s 70s, they weren't allowing, I shouldn't say weren't allowing, but uh, they weren't accepting African Americans out into the suburbs. And they were literally stuck living in East Cleveland. Uh, w whether that's a, a positive or a negative, I don't know. I mean, because... As far as I'm concerned, this is a beautiful community, um, but I, I don't think I don't think racism plays. I mean, you got you're going to have a bad egg in every every basket. I don't care, but you can't you, you can't uh, rate the whole city of East Cleveland because of a few bad eggs that have a problem with you know whitey or, or whatever or mixed couple or whatever. So. You know, and that goes the same way, you know, I mean, and it's funny because growing up in, in Warren, there was never any racism. And when I took, when Dee and I go down to Warren, all my old buddies are Caucasian that I went to high school with, that 
I grew up on the same block with, and they all accept, they accept her like, you know, I mean, she's a person, for God's sakes. What, what did you want to piggyback on it? Um, um, the things that I've seen as far as racism here in East Cleveland has been, you know, monies allocated to East Cleveland versus Cleveland or different other suburbs. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen it in that way where, you know, East Cleveland has been slighted in, in different things. And so I have seen the racism in that area where, you know, like say Cleveland Heights gets more money than East Cleveland or um, Shaker has more activities going on and they have more money versus, you know, a place like East Cleveland, Bratton, or, you know, um, in the political realm of things. Outside of East Cleveland, there's not a lot of activities with politicians coming into East Cleveland doing anything, you know, and I've seen a lot of that. You know, I'm grateful that Marsha Fudge came here, you know, Shirley Smith has come here, but we don't have a lot of activity in, in the city of East Cleveland with politicians, you know, coming in, telling them what their, their um, issues are and what they're standing for and, and allowing the people to, to make a judgment call on whether they like them or not, you know. So I would like to see more of politicians come in and, and engage with the people of East Cleveland, you know, because we do matter and we can give get them reelected. You know, it's not just about all the outskirts cities. It's about us as well in East Cleveland. So you do believe that the po political scene should collaborate with each other? Right. Collaborate. You've seen a little of that, but not at a level not, that you would like. Right. Is that correct? Right. Okay. You, 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 do you think that would make a difference? Oh, yes. If, if you engage a community, a community will get involved. If you have the activities for them to do, people will get involved. If, you know, if you just say, oh, we ain't going to bother with them, we're going to leave them alone. Of course, they're going to sit back and talk about, you know, have negative stories about this one and the politician this. And, but if they're actively involved and know what the politician is all about, they're likely to engage in their communities more. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mike, I'm going to ask you this question. It's a two-part question, and then, Dietra, you can pick up on it. How has in inequality impacted you personally? Never has. Never have. So you don't feel that No. at this point? No. Nothing. Somebody's negative, I walk away. Okay. I, I, I have nothing to do with it. Okay. Okay. Teacher? Same here. Okay. You know, I don't, I don't engage in, in, in it because it's not worth it to me. Yeah. I believe humans are humans. That's it. We have to learn to love each other. I want to criticize. I'll go look in the mirror. Okay. Okay. The second part to the question is, how has it impacted the, the city of East Cleveland? I'll let my uh, wife take that. Okay. <laughs> wife, take that <laughs> well, just like I said, you know, getting people more involved, you know, on every level and, and, and the things that we don't get because of the city of East Cleveland and us having a majority of, of African Americans here and, and the slightness that we feel because of that, you know. When you said a majority of African Americans here, can you expound on that a little? That we have, this, the city of East Cleveland has more African Americans than any other race here. Okay. And so we're slighted in a lot of areas. In what areas? I'm not clear. Housing, employment. There, like, like Mr. Taylor was talking about, not having a grocery store, and the grocery store that we do have, is not the greatest. It was rated one of the worst grocery stores in East Cleveland. Yeah. 
overpriced. You know, some of the the corner stores, you know, the quality of food that they have in them, they're terrible. You know, so if you do go shopping and you're getting something to drink, <laughs> just because you know, you know, it's quick and convenient, but, or people that smoke, they buy cigarettes from the corner stores or booze and stuff like that, but they're not going to buy nothing too much from the corner stores. You know, they go outside of the city to get their groceries. Um, what is it? Um, the, uh, Foreman Mills? And what's the store next to Foreman Mills? Save a lot. Save a lot. Okay. They've just come into the area, so that's close enough to East Cleveland where people are starting to shop there. And uh, Foreman Mills is a place where people can buy uh, clothes at a reasonable cost. You know, so you see people there. Um, I went to uh, Stockman's. And I saw that they had a little food in there, you know. And But other than that, we really don't have quality places to go to. And you mentioned a grocery store. It's not actually in East Cleveland. It's near East it's Cleveland. Near so you mentioned that most of the people have to go outside for yes. their quality stuff. But day to day, they use the local groceries. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you do, and you... Both do the same. Mm -hmm. Go outside of the yes, city. Yes. Yes. To shop, period, or just just groceries. Groceries, okay. Other than that, you do your laundry, uh, cleaners, shopping in East Cleveland. East Cleveland, yeah. Okay. So you don't have a need to go all out and around to do other things. Well, actually, we gave our washer and dryer to our daughter, so she does our laundry. But we're, when we're in a pinch, we wash right here. No, we go to Little Italy. Oh, wash. we go to Little Italy. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because Little Italy is less expensive than some of the other uh, laundry Laundry's. mats in East Cleveland. And Little Italy is a suburb around East Cleveland? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that in minutes away of East yes, Cleveland? Right, yes, just uh, north on Mayfield. Okay. But we do have laundry mats here in East Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Very expensive. Very expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay, you said expensive. Okay. The next question is, can you recall a memory or incident when the community fought for something? Um, I can. Um, <coughs> it was the Huron Hospital. Mm -hmm. That's been the most recent thing that the city has fought for, and um, they lost in one way, but gained in another. Um, they got monetary gains from it, and also they were able to get um, the building torn down, and that was something that was very much needed because with them tearing down the building, something else can go there. You know, and that would keep people, because we have a banded building here on Superior where somebody got killed and they found the body there, you know, and having that big hospital, no telling what could have happened. There would have been a whole lot of homeless people in the building, going throughout the building, and you never know what, what problems could have happened if they had kept the building up. Um, from what I was told, it would take too much for them to to do uh, work on the building. So it was better that it was torn down. What, was that part of, to your understanding, It was a, that was one of the good things that they yes. closed it and tore it down. So yes. that's a two-part to it, right. is correct? Right. So w were you glad to see that happen? Yes. Okay. I mean, since they were going to leave the building, it was nice that they considered tearing it down. And it came from a lot of negotiations between the mayor and Noah and, you know, just, just you know, talking it out, trying to, to, to come to something that was good for the city of East Cleveland. So I'm grateful that they got the money and they were able to tear down your find is the recent your memory 
Well, uh, I personally, I think here in, in East Cleveland, they need a, uh, they could have used that building. I, I, they need a building for the homeless. Uh, there's a lot of people that have been, that have gotten, un have lost their jobs. They've been unemployed for a long time. Uh, like I told you earlier, I renovate and uh, redo apartment buildings here in East Cleveland, and uh, I'm always finding homeless people in my in the buildings I'm renovating. And I ask them, "What's going? You know, you got to leave. I don't have anywhere to go." And I've heard that an awful lot. And all my uh, the only thing I can say is well you can't do nothing here you got to do nothing somewhere this is private property but if these people had a place to go you know a, a restart program of some sort for them you know educate them get, get them a new field something that you know where they could earn an honest living because they're not all the homeless people are not drug addicts and drunks that's a misconception on the public's part. These people are just, you know, people actually are just down on their luck, you know, because unemployment is really high here in East Cleveland. And I'm just fortunate because I'm a tradesman and I have a trade. I can go anywhere in the country and work. But for some people, right out of high school, they got jobs, and now all of a sudden, boom, they're gone. And they have nothing or nowhere to go. And you see that on a regular basis or every now and then? Daily basis. Daily basis. Daily basis. You talk to them face to face? Yes. Okay. And I treat them with respect, you know, but I, ha I have a job to do and I have to explain that to them. But I'm not going to talk down to them because by the grace of God, they're walk me. Okay. Anything you'd like to piggyback on? It's pretty much the truth. <laughs> okay. I'm unemployed, so, you know, and it's hard finding work. Okay. The next question is, how have the surrounding institutions and cities impacted East Cleveland? Go, girl. Michael? Uh, you want to clarify that? I, I don't. Understand. Many that's around the institutions, of the the different cities. How is that impacting East Cleveland? Uh, how is the different institutions that's coming up or been in in the past impacting East Cleveland? Do you think that is a, a positive or negative on East Cleveland? Well, so I don't understand what you mean by institutions. Institution for for an example. I would say a university circle, the different colleges. Oh, I think all it's the wonderful. Organizations and, and yeah, it really looks. It really, I, you know, I haven't been in Cleveland in, in well, we, like I say, we've only been here since '08, and uh, I we've been gone since '86, '87. So uh, coming back here, it was like going to a brand new town. This has all changed. It looks wonderful. You know, what they've done, I wish they would just continue east with their renovation, you know. And and I'm doing all I can do in this area, uh, but we need some support, some help. I mean, this is a beautiful area. There's beautiful buildings, my God, and they're just crumbling. And, and, and look at all the renovation they're doing downtown. And like you say, the University Circle. When you say going east, what part of east are you mentioning? East on Euclid. Okay. That's all you have to do. Drive down Euclid Avenue, and you can see the change. As soon as you leave University Heights and get into East Cleveland, you can see it's it's almost a solid wall. It just changes. Okay. You know? And when you mention that the beautiful buildings, what did you have in mind that you feel that is crumbling? Well, it's the buildings. They're... For years, these, like the buildings, I'll just take, for instance, the buildings that I'm currently working on. They were run by slumlords for years. They were let go. They weren't, there was no upkeep. And now we're going, you know, and they're, <clears throat> they're beautiful buildings. They could be used for anything. I mean, just like that, what I mentioned earlier, the Project Restart. These people would have a place to live with their families. Do you the, think with the... Oh, go ahead, I Go ahead. No, and I mean... These buildings have so much character. They're so much more beautiful than these 
chrome and glass things that they're throwing up now, which are nice, mind you, but I like the old style. Okay. So you want to keep the fixtures and the decor of the older buildings instead of replacing them with the newer? Yes. Okay. I mean, that, that's what I... I mean, there, there's nothing wrong with them structurally. People just... I don't, I, I don't know. They say that if it's old, it looks... makes the area look old. I, I don't see that. Okay. Aditya, how do you feel about it? Um, uh, the university project that they brought into East Cleveland, I thought that was really well. And it, it will get people more involved in East Cleveland, hopefully, to renovate some of the uh, Euclid, area, uh, Euclid Avenue area. You know, one of the dreams that I had was having a grocery store on um, right across the street from where those buildings are. There's a, a, an old, uh, I can't remember what they said it was. That, that place that I was talking about. It was a car repair shop. And I would love to see that whole block oh. as a oh. grocery store. Lakeview. Yeah, it's on Lakeview. It's right there on Lake Lakeview. Lakeview and Euclid. Um, to have that as a grocery store. And one day I had a dream. And the dream was that we had a um, garden garden uh, street clubs had gardens on their blocks and so the store had uh, store signs with the street clubs and everybody could go to each block and buy groceries from that street club and that brought revenue back into the street club to, to bring money back into them to be able to make their groceries. And some of the green, some had, some of the blocks had greenhouses. Some of them, you know, it was really, really nice gardens, you know. And and that was something that I saw in my dream, and I had told people about it, you know. So that's one of the things I would love to see happen here in East Cleveland, is to have each block be able to have re revenue coming in so that they're able to improve in their gardens and improve on their streets. Um, I started a street club here in Eddington and one of the things that I've been trying to do is get people involved to care. We have some houses that we need the grass cut and, and you know, just getting people more involved in caring about the streets. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I would love to see happen in East Cleveland. Mm -hmm. is that people start getting involved with their own individual streets, not having to go and, and cure the whole East Cleveland. Just care about their streets. Care about the you know, street. pick up the garbage when you see it on the floor, on the ground, as everybody says here. <laughs> you know, and, and just pick it up, you know, because you care. If somebody can't bring their garbage cans back, help them out. You know, we have a lot of older people here. Help them out. You know, the younger kids, show them how to do that. You know, Mr. So-and-so can't bring his cans back. Just bring them back and, you know, you know that they belong back there. Just put them back there for them. You know, mm -hmm. ask them if you can cut their grass. You cutting your grass, cut theirs too. You know, little things like that within the block will help the community look better. Yep. You know, so... Those are some of the ideas that I've had, you know, and so I said I'm going to start right here on Eddington. And some of these homes here are, are, that are empty are still structurally sound, and they have history. The, the, the house that we're filming this in right now was bought out of a Sears and Roebuck catalog, 1921. Wow. These are, they, they have, you want to see ugly homes, go out west. <laughs> they all look the same. Okay. Uh, these have character. They have yes. personality. It's like the cars back in the 60s. You know? It, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Well, well, Deidre, you did do a wonderful job. And you too, Mr. Michael, you did a wonderful job. But you led me into my next question, Deidre. And I would like for you to start, off, start this particular question um, and answer it for me. It says, what is your vision for a future of East Cleveland? And you did a wonderful job. You just recapped it. And if you just wanted to say it in a couple of words, what would you say? 
get people involved. Okay. Get okay. people involved in okay. the community. It sounds like you have a passion for that. Yes. Okay. Because it's a beautiful community. And I can see in the next five years this being a booming business, you know, this place doing a lot of good things, you know. I know everybody's got their five-year plan, their 10-year plan. Well, make East Cleveland a part of the plan, you know, because it is a beautiful city. And, uh, Michael, I know you mentioned uh, several times of uh, uh, what you would vision East Cleveland. If you wanted to say it in one word, one or two words or more, what would you... All I want to, you know what, to sum this whole thing up, I want to quit saying East Cleveland was a beautiful community. I want to be able to say East Cleveland is a beautiful okay. community. Okay, okay. Uh, Lee, and, go ahead. And I have to say, and I'm going to keep on saying it, I would love for Mr. King to run for a council position. So <laughs> I'm just going to keep putting that out there until I see it happen. <laughs> The next uh, part of the question is, tell me about your major issues that needs addressed in order to better the neighborhood, the community, and the city. Um, the housing block that has happened, you know, um, we have a lot of empty houses here in East Cleveland. And there has to be a project where either they can be refurbished, re done and, and given back to the community, you know, people who really care about their community, not just somebody that's going to come in and tear it up, but people that really care. Um, it's, it's just sad seeing these buildings as beautiful as they are, empty. You know, the grass not cut because, you know, the city can't afford to, to send somebody out to cut the grass. You know, it's, it's really sad. And the people in the community won't touch it because it's not mine. You know, it's really sad that that happens because there's so many young, viable per people that can do it and just won't because it's not mine. When you say not mine, can you clarify that for me, please? Not mine, meaning they don't own it. And when they don't own it, that means? They don't want to touch it. They'd rather sit on the couch and play video games. But they could uh, service the area, but they just don't want to. Is that, what, is that correct? It all falls back in the cooperation, getting people organized. Give them some incentive to get up in the morning. Give them some a reason to do something. You know, I <laughs> think... I know I don't, I don't lift anything unless I get paid for it, and I'm not a lazy man. I've worked all my life. But, I mean, you, you, the children today just haven't had enough insight. They haven't had enough guidance, and I keep repeating that. But, I mean, and I try to talk to them, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm babbling. Excuse well, me. Well, we, we want that. Your feedback is very important to us, and this is what we need. To, to see oh, you what we need. Set off that grenade. <laughs> well, let me lead on to the next question. What would it be? What would you be prepared to do to participate in making East Cleveland better, Mr. Michael? Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, meaning. Exactly. Uh, uh, attend more uh, functions with my wife when she asks me, and I say no because I want to sit here and watch a ball game. You know. Uh, they're get you know it's the pot calling the kettle black. Here I'm raising hell about the kids, not being motivated, and on my weekends instead of getting motivated and going with my wife and doing things, uh, just getting involved, getting my face out there. When you mention um, getting involved and getting your face out there, what what do you really want to do? I, you know, like uh, like Deidre said, get it organized. You know, I mean, I, I work well with, with uh, young people. I kind of see eye to eye on them. I've grown older, not quite up, but so, you know, <laughs> I get along I like with the that. younger generations. Okay. Medija? Um, I am involved. Okay. And when I hit East Cleveland, I started getting involved. I know that's, that's what you have to do if you want to see something get better is be involved in it. 
So that's something I did from day one. And whether I'm picking up garbage or saying hi to somebody, you know, going to city council meetings, doing what part I can do, I'm willing to do that, you know, and, and make this place a better place, you know, encouraging upcoming um, council people. Um, because I know if we have that, we have a future. You know, it can't be the old, because sometimes we get blocked in what we're thinking. And we don't want to see improvements happen. You know, we want it to be just how it's always been. And sometimes we need change. And with that, younger people can bring on a change for us. You know, we don't always accept the new stuff. But sometimes the new stuff is what we need to make life better. Well, you next mentioned a new stuff compared to making a change. What, what does that mean? For me, the new stuff is uh, technology, um, opening our minds to different avenues that we never thought of before. If we stay stuck in, in you know, having black and white be the only color that's around, you know, we wouldn't have the vibrant colors and activities and things that we can do now. You know, I was listening to the news and they were talking about how kids don't know how to play with uh, board games and stuff like that. Well, nobody has taught them how to play a board game. Nobody sat down and showed them, you know, so now their new technology is, is video games. So we have to learn to accept those video games and, and learn how they enjoy playing and, and being a part of. You know, it, it's, it's a whole new world and we have to move with the world. Great. I want to take the opportunity and have my business uh, partner, Mr. Brandon King, and classmate to ask a few questions and I'll close it out. Okay. Thank you. Well, we have a... Maybe a couple questions or an observations. How did you two meet? And where? We met at an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. Here in East Cleveland? No, in Oakland, California. Wow. Now, go ahead. Oh, no, and uh, we were both married to other people at the time. And uh, I asked her to go to dinner. She were declined because we were married. And uh, seven years later, we met again in a town of 50,000 people in the middle of Nevada. And uh, I didn't let her go this time. What brought you to Cleveland, specifically East Cleveland? A U-Haul truck. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, miles. actually, we went to um, Willoughby. And we lived in Willoughby for a year. A year, and he found the job at Lake Park Tower, and that's what brought us to East Cleveland. Yes. Glad you're here in East Cleveland. <laughs> now, as a couple, my last question: What would be your fondest memory of East Cleveland as a couple? Me, uh, I was going to say meeting uh, a lady, Mrs. Mrs. Jane, Jane Sheets. She, uh, my mother recently passed away a couple of uh, months ago, and Jane has adopted me as her son. And uh, she raises hell with me like I'm her son. She bats me in the head when I need it. I love her to death, and she's, she's got the patience of Job, for God's sakes. And uh, that's all I got to say on that. She's been, she's been the inspiration for both of us, you know, to the good and the bad. She's been there. It, you know, and really love the woman. <laughs> yeah. And and I have to say, I have met other women that have been the same. You know, they just step in, and you know, Miss May Harris, she's been a dream to us. You know, so it's you know, Mr. Taylor, he yeah. he takes on you know, yeah. and he's like a dad here. You know, so we have a extended family, and and that's what mm -hmm. makes. East Cleveland the best, you know, yeah. it's because people, take time. people just take time out and they care, and they show they care. Mm -hmm.
Thanks. And it's not always financially like a, it's it's just uh, you know advice, wisdom. You know, sit down on the porch with Mr. Taylor and talk and just suck up all of that knowledge that the man has. Same with Jane. Uh, it's wonderful. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Mr. King, for that additional uh, question. I would like to just ask a closing question, um, and if you can answer it as a couple. You had mentioned that a lot of people adopted both of y'all. Well, I should say, a lot of people came and was a part of y'all lives and continue to be a part of your lives now to help you to grow or to show you East Cleveland warm and wealth or what what perspective i think they're just oh. loving, i think they're just loving people okay and they they it's like a dog that comes up and sniffs he knows whether it's the person's right or not and these people they took us in they knew that we were you know no dope none of, you know they knew we were good people decent people that just wanted a break you know and uh you know they stuck their hand out do you have any uh, pictures around that you would say when you first came to compare to now in 2008 to mm -hmm. present that you would like to share? Do I have any pictures? Pictures or anything that was made correct that you have uh, on mm -hmm. hand? Any pictures or anything that um, would be uh, I have great. them on the computer. But nothing that we can no. take at this point? I mean, I can email them to you or, you know, because they're on the computer. What I did was I, I've been... Yeah, we've got pictures of living in East Cleveland since we first came to right, East Cleveland. I have, I have pictures of the parade and, di you know, different events. Beautiful pictures off, of Le off the top of Lake Park Tower of the surrounding area. Yeah. Okay. Downtown. I can get those to you. Okay. Well, I just want to close and wrap this uh, wonderful interview up. I want to thank you so very much in advance for sending me those pictures. I wanted to thank uh, uh, Mr. Michael Teachout and Ms. Teacher Teachout and my uh, co-partner, Mr. Brandon King, for this couple interview. So you will be the first couple interview that we had. So we're both excited about it, and we want to say thank you so very much for your time and attention and your wisdom and, and vision for East Cleveland. And one day we will be able to uh, break bread together and have a new uh, person that would uh, give us a new insight and vision, too. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Cleveland rocks, man. Go try. Go Browns. <laughs>